Hello and welcome to another episode of World Beyond Belief. My name's Paul Marco and we're privileged to have with us again Eric Karlstrom. Now, this is really an important interview because he's going to talk about a subject that's, well, it's, it's off the radar for most people in the world, but it's an incredibly important subject and it's increasing in importance as time goes by. It's the topic of gang stalking. So here we are with Eric and we're going to start talking. I'm going to pretty much give him the floor because that's he's a he's a very experienced lecturer and he knows how to put together thoughts and run things together. So I'm going to try to stay out of as much as I can, but ask questions that I think you might be wanting to ask. So here we are. Welcome to the World Beyond Belief, Eric. Thank you, Paul. It's always nice to have a chance to uh, to visit with you and talk about things that we think are very important. And, yes. and uh, uh, let me just, if you don't mind, I'll just give a little background of myself so that people know where I'm coming from. I uh, um, got my master's in 1977, University of Wyoming in physical geography, my PhD in 1981 in physical geography, especially specializing in soils, landforms, and climate. And uh, then I went on to teach at three universities for 30 years. So I went up through the ranks of assistant professor, associate professor, full professor, and uh, left California State University Stanislaus in 2011. Uh, but I've been pretty busy with my four websites ever since. I've got four websites, and they are 911nwo.com, naturalclimatechange.us, uh, waterwatchalliance.us and ericcarlstrom.com, which is my for fun music site because I've always loved playing uh, music, guitar, banjo, and piano. So that one's more or less uh, an attempt at a commercial site. The other three are educational sites. They're really meant to be digital libraries of information for people uh, to consult. Now, as I say, I was a professor for 30 years, so I would have published in, you know, professional journals, national and international. So I know how to do research and I know how to put together thoughts and I know how to, uh, um, uh, you know, write them down. And, and I do regard this as a service. My, my main topics that got me into this rabbit hole that we're living in now, mm -hmm. uh, I, I knew from my own research in climate change, uh, and climates of the past, that the whole global warming thing coming out of, well, the United Nations and the U.S. government and other cooperating governments, I knew that was a, a big lie and uh, that this is a fraudulent claim in order to usher in, uh, you know, huge carbon taxes, trillions of dollars a year and usher in the U.N. as, as global government uh -huh. and, and also uh, meant as a cover for geoengineering and weather warfare uh, which, you know, billions have gone into that uh, over the last five decades or so, federal monies. And uh, so all that's on my naturalclimatechange.us website, which is now being updated so that my own professional papers are on there, as well as those of my father and many, many, many PowerPoints from professionals uh, at various conferences, the, like the International Conference on Climate Change, which was held in 2008 and 2009. My other big topic is uh, 911, another huge government-sponsored fraud. Yeah. And uh, that's what my 911nwo.com website is, is dedicated to investigating. And that's been going up. That's, that's probably over 11 or 12 years old. I keep updating it. And uh, our last interview, I think, was pretty important. We talked about the 46-plus uh, drills that the Air Force and NATO and uh, the UN and all kinds of cooperating agencies right. were doing on the day of 9-11 and before, which mimicked exactly the uh, characteristics of, of the Operation 911. You know, everything from the hijackers and hijacked planes to, uh, uh, well, it's, it's all on my website too. It's on, it's on our interview that is posted on your uh, on your site, and then I've got an article about that as well. Uh -huh. uh, okay, so those are my two big entry points to what I would have to call now criminal government. We have criminal government, lawless, yes. uh, maybe maybe criminal syndicate or 
or internesting criminal syndicates is a, is, a, is an accurate way to look at it. Yeah. Now, just when you think things are bad, <laughs> uh, then there's gang stalking and uh, or organized gang stalking. Other names for it are counterintelligence stalking uh, or uh, um, there's there's a number of names: community stalking, vigilante stalking in which um, all kinds of civilian spies are enlisted, often by local police, often by uh, um, uh, handlers of various kinds, uh, in order to target individuals who are designated as, well, who knows, you can get on these lists in a number of ways, uh, to become a targeted individual could be that you're a whistleblower. That's very common. Uh -huh. uh, in other words, a way to neutralize people uh, and eventually destroy the lives of people who are questioning uh, the system. So perhaps it comes as no surprise then with my history, I might myself be a targeted individual. And in fact, that's the case. So mm. I can speak I can speak from uh, academic, research experience, and I can also speak from personal experience on this. And uh, this is a very unsavory topic because the, the goal of these community spying networks is to neutralize, discredit, ultimately destroy uh, individuals that the state deems as uh, problematic. So it's really a disposal system for citizens. Now this becomes outrageous when you consider that the United States government was founded to protect the rights right. of American citizens and uh, American citizens' private property rights, etc. And now you have elements within the government, including Department of Homeland Security, uh, which was formed right after 911, uh, who are coordinating efforts that go right up to the top of our government, come right down to the local police, and indeed, if you, if you uh, research it, uh, in fact, connects with the satanic networks of the world, which are really the underbelly of, of our world, the Illuminati bloodlines being the top. Now, they're never seen, but they are often the unseen hand coordinators of these programs. Now, these programs have real legs, these citizen spy programs. And let me just mention for your, for your viewers that it's possible to get an idea of what's going on here simply by watching some movies. Uh, there's an excellent movie called The Lives of Others, which uh, really tells the true story of the uh, secret police, the Stasi police in East Germany during the Cold War, when uh, you had an enormous, uh, one out of six members of the civil civilian population was enlisted by the state police wow. to spy on other uh, civilians. And again, the targets would include artists and intellectuals and people who are potential problems. Now, in this movie, The Lives of Others, you, you, you see, uh, you know, a, a case of that. You see both sides. You see the spies who are monitoring, you know, bugging the, the apartments of, of in this case, the targeted individual is a playwright who's considered dangerous because he's smart and he can write plays. Right. When in fact he's kind of supportive of the East German government, but that doesn't matter. Uh, but anyway, so you you see it from both sides, and what is fascinating is that uh, the East German Stasi police a system really comes out of the Soviet Union Cheka police. Again, the same idea: how does a totalitarian government control things on the street? Well, you have this. You have this cooperation between citizen spies, citizen snitches, uh -huh. who yeah. are often motivated by a little bit of money or maybe they're given a break on a, uh, on a uh, criminal charge that the police have against them. In other words, you cooperate with us, we'll cooperate with you. And uh, so you get uh, uh, a whole network, incredibly uh, organized, vertically uh, uh, integrated network in which uh, many, many citizens often ex-military, often ex-police, often military, often police, often civilians, often bottom feeders. These would be the, what we call the perpetrators who actually are carrying out the, the uh, gang stalking operations uh, against 
the TIs, who are the targeted individuals. And normally, this involves at first a few years of surveillance so that uh, the, the targeted individual or the TI doesn't even know that they're being targeted. Uh, but uh, they, they are getting, uh, the perpetrators, the, the hierarchy there is getting a psychological profile on the individual so that they can figure out how best to push their buttons, harass them, get them to get pushed over the edge so they will act out. For instance, if they were to commit a crime against you know, one of their gang stalkers, or commit suicide. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of material on this on the web. I would I would tell your readers, um, a lot of people are speaking out about this. So there's a lot of targeted individuals who have access to the same technology that you and I do, who are putting their stories on the internet. And uh, I would suggest uh, first of all, okay, the movies are great. Another one's called uh, The Game with Michael Douglas, which is quite old. Uh, but actually gives you the idea of how these community spying networks would work to take a very, very rich individual. In this case, Michael Douglas plays a millionaire or billionaire in, in San Francisco. They, they completely break him down psychologically. They take all his money. They take his home uh, and they get him to kill his brother. Uh, all, uh, you know, through these very skillful uses. Now, this is really coming out of not only the Soviet Cheka and the East German Stasi, but these kinds of citizen spy networks integrated with police have been used in Hungary, Poland during the, you know, with the communist era there, as well as Portugal. And, of course, the United States has an incredible history when you look at the FBI's counterintelligence program of the 60s and 70s, and this is COINTELPRO on steroids. Yeah. And then if you look at the CIA's MK Ultra programs, mind control of the 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, right on to today, uh, you put these two together, MK Ultra, CIA's MK Ultra, with the FBI's COINTELPRO, with all this new psychological information and hardware. The technology now they, includes directed energy weapons, sure. or, what they, or what they call uh, uh, non-lethal weapons or slow kill or hands-off torture. So people can be uh, harassed electronically in their own homes. Um, heart attacks can be induced uh, and are. People are killed in this program, bottom line. Right. And, uh, and, and once you are in the program, apparently wherever you go, if you go you know, from where I live in Colorado to Pennsylvania, your, your protocol <laughs> follows you and the gang stalking will continue there with the hierarchical structure that is developed there. If you go to Portugal, same thing. The United States government has spent upwards of a trillion dollars on these kinds of programs, including Department of Homeland Security, and coordinating the CIA, FBI, local police um, uh, since 911. Upwards of a trillion dollars to beef up this super Gestapo, Stasi, police state that we live in. Now, most Americans are so propagandized yeah. that, you know, perhaps they're not a threat, you know. Um, but the genius, the, the diabolical genius behind this program is that the people who become perpetrators are also controlled. Sure. So they control not only the perpetrators, but through the perpetrators, they control and try to destroy the lives of the targeted individuals. And this can go on for years. Uh, one of the, uh, uh, let me just mention a couple more movies. There's the ga game, there's the, uh, um, uh, the lives of others. I just saw a great movie the other day with Nicolas Cage called uh, Seeking Justice, came out in uh, 2013, which very much shows the situation of gang stalking and how this can push a normally civilized uh, individual, Nicolas Cage, sure. over the edge to become, you know, uh, it can bring out the caveman, you know, to, to bring right, out the, right. the axe murderer in him because you know how to push that person's buttons. Yeah. Uh, and another great movie in this regard is 1998 uh, uh, Will Smith's Enemy of the State, in which uh, it has shown the incredible technologies that the NSA uh, National Security Agency uh, had, but even then, uh, in 1998, in order to track, follow, uh, neutralize, kill, 
uh, an enemy of the state. In this case, in the movie, Will Smith is uh, is happens to be an innocent guy, and uh, the guy that they were after uh, had a had an incriminating iPhone film of a congressman or a, or a high official who killed a congressman. So the enemy was this young this the biologist who was filming a lake to look for birds or whatever, and he sees this murder, got it on his iPhone, and he put it in his friend's pocket. And now all of a sudden, the iPhone tracks along, and uh, Will Smith, who was his lawyer friend, all of a sudden then inherits that role as enemy of the state. Right. And then the rest of the movie is Will Smith trying to survive this incredible assault coordinated from, right. uh, you know, this one individual, of course, worked high in the NSA, so he had access to all the all the toys and all the personnel. So this this uh, those are four good movies. I think there's probably many more that kind of show you what's going on. But uh, it's very real. Uh, there's probably, um, well, Department of Homeland Security spreads grants around to local police departments um, and local fire you know, emergency responders, fire, police, ambulance people would often be enlisted to give it a air of respectability. And a lot of these perpetrators, you know, are basically do-gooders thinking that, oh my gosh, we got a, we got a terrorist. You know, we've yeah. got a, you know, we got to play ball with the, the powers that be. So basically they're duped. Now, now remember the Stanley Milgram experiment. Mm -hmm which we talked about earlier, which I think came from 71 or 61, it's way old, a Harvard psychology professor, showed that in a controlled situation, uh, if somebody in a lab coat, for instance, who looks authoritative and is a pair, for instance, a doctor, will, will stand next to a subject who is actually being experimented on and telling him to go ahead and administer shocks to a third person behind a glass window, that third person is actually an actor and so is the authority figure. But the subject, who has actually got a hand on, on the electronic controls, uh, doesn't know that he's the subject. Uh, he just knows that the, the doctor authority figure is telling him, okay, uh, they screwed up, give him a bigger shock. Yeah. And, and this goes on to, and then of course the actor down there, you know, writhing in pain right. and uh, fake. But, uh, and then the, then the authority figure says more, more, and 70%. And uh, of the people that were tested, and this has been borne out in subsequent research, 70% of us human beings will listen to that authority figure and shock that third person party, uh, you know, uh, even unto death, you know, serious damage. Um, so in other words, we're, we're, we're quite gullible. And if you go online, uh, there's a little excellent uh, video in which, uh, uh, again, there's a similar test and a guy with, you know, who's carrying a badge, who's not a police, but, you know, right. he looks like he is, uh, comes up to uh, a young man who's, uh, you know, this is in California at a, at a farmer's market or something. And, the, and he says, now that lady in there with the baby in the carriage, she stole that baby. What I want you to do is go in there and get that baby carriage and bring it up to me. When she's not looking, just grab it. And so this young man, again, he's the subject. He's got a little kid. He wants to do what's right. Uh, the guy with a badge convinces him he's a cop. You know, he pulls this out right. and convinces him that she's bad. So he goes in. And he, he takes out the carriage. Right. And then, of course, then the you know then the uh, the truth comes out, and it, you know the woman is just screaming at this at this actor or this uh, this subject who has just taken away her baby. So this is how. You know, at least many people can be co-opted into participating, and and you know, ex-military guys, you know, they're team players. I mean, I've been harassed by ex-military guys, but it's it's usually lately it's kind of you know in a, in a friendly way. But they're spies. They want to know where you're going. They want to know what you're doing. They're on their cell phones all the time and their iPads, so they're part of this communication network. And I've seen these people, so many of them, with cell phones to their ear nice. as they're operating whatever their orders are. And usually their orders are fairly constrained. You know, go here, cut up, cut off this person in a car, or follow that person in a car, or in the case of a grocery store, you know, mob that person with uh, you know eight or ten people and say this and that. They're usually scripted, yeah. and uh, 
An excellent website that people can go on to to learn about this is, is, is called fightgangstalking.com. Fightgangstalking.com. And the guy who put together this website uh, has been on both sides of it. He's, he's been at the surveillance and uh, perpetrator side, and he's been at the victim or TI, targeted individual side. It's very, very helpful. So if you want to get one site where you get the information, to, and of course, if you, are, if you are a targeted individual, this information is life or death. Sure. Because if you don't know what's happening, you literally can be driven to suicide, um, as many have. Right. Uh, or to act out. And, what, and again, why they want to get you to act out is so they can arrest you or put you in an institution. And since right. the institution and the police are in on it, generally speaking, you know, you're better off not going to the police and right. you're better off not going to a psychologist because right. once they get you institutionalized, then they can throw away the key. Right. So that's, that's part of it. So this is a very, very integrated system. Our Department of Homeland Security has a budget of upwards of 40 to 60 billion a year, has 225,000 employees, and this is all post 911. Right. And they're sprinkling around these grants, like our little tiny Sawatch County here, I think got a $60,000 grant. And now we have a SWAT team, uh, population 6,000 in a 3,000 square acre county, and we've got a SWAT team. And, and that one of our commissioners is always going to the Department of Homeland Security meetings to stay on the sure. same page because he wants to be a good doobie. Sure. And he's too stupid to know what's going on. And I hate to, you know, just yeah. use those words, but I have a little bit of resentment here. And, uh, and then another one of our public servant uh, commissioners is going off to meet with uh, all these representatives who want to sell the county on drones. <laughs> Oh, yeah, they'll do lots of good things like help map uh, agricultural fields, you know. And, of course, this is, this is what they use in, in uh, Afghanistan and Iraq as surveillance right. and, and, uh, and as weapons, you know. So, so what, what can happen then is that these drones can be turned back against the American citizenry. Sure. And, and what we've seen is, is, again, a criminal government defining the citizenry of America as enemy. Right. Obviously, the government has put itself in the position of enemy. And uh, if American people could possibly wake up uh, and put these people in jail, we know who's behind 911. Right. We know who's behind the global warming fraud. Right. And we know who's behind the gang stalking up to the point of the uh, bloodline Illuminati. And we right. know them, the Rockefellers. Right. I mean, these people should be locked away. Uh, I think give them their own continent, Antarctica, myself. Right. <laughs> give them a give them a cigarette lighter and a sleeping bag and right. put them there. Um, that's 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 the only way, you know, because these people are so rich and powerful. But uh, uh, let me just go through and and show you how much how much is underneath this. Um, here's a I've I've put out a little gang stalking uh, primer and and gang stalking action packet, and I put up this information in our little town of Crestone, which has an enormous number of gang stalkers, by the way, for a town of, you know, 1,500. But they come from everywhere. You see people, you know, with New Mexico plates or elsewhere, you know. So they come in, they're part of a network, they get a phone call, go do this, fairly tightly scripted, you know, that guy in that truck, do this, you know. Um, and then leave or whatever. So let, let me just give you a couple of the definitions that are on my, on my gang stalking packet. Gang stalking refers to the intense, long-term, unconstitutional, it's illegal, unconstitutional, and immoral, breaks two of the Ten Commandments, and oh. that is, thou shalt not bear false witness right. against your neighbor. Because they're always saying, well, this targeted individual is a pedophile, or he's a terrorist, or right. something, to get these dumb do-gooders, or just zombies, because right. I think some of these perpetrators, in fact, are mind-control victims. Uh, that's how they pull them in. So it's long-term unconstitutional surveillance and harassment of a person who has been designated as a target by someone associated with America's security industry. Official domestic counterintelligence operations of this type are perpetrated by federal agents and private contractors, sometimes with the support of state and local law enforcement personnel. The goal in the parlance of counterintelligence agents is to, quote, subvert or neutralize an individual deemed to be an enemy or potential enemy 
of clients or members of the security state. Arguably the most accurate term for this form of harassment is counterintelligence stalking. The perpetrators, major perpetrators of organized stalking in the U.S. are the FBI, the Department of Homeland Security, U.S. military counterintelligence agencies, state and law, local law enforcement agency, intelligence units, excuse me, I'll say that again, state and local law enforcement intelligence units, or LEIU, uh, LEUs, and private security contractors. All of these groups and other federal intelligence agencies, such as the CIA and NSA, have well-documented histories of abusing their powers and, sure. you know, using human Americans as guinea pigs, etc. It goes right. way back. Okay, then citizen spies are also called surveillance role players. You get a job. You might get a new car. You might yeah. get a new house if you play ball with these people. Um, Perpetrators of gang stalking crimes rely upon support from citizens who are, quote, useful idiots, vigilantes, and sadists. These street level perps, aka gangst, the, the fight gang stalking uh, website's very cool. He calls them brown nosers. Yeah. Also known as brown nosers and cockroaches and sewer rats. I mean, these people are scum of the earth, right, they but are. often they're dupes, you know, so they're not quite scum of the earth. They're just stupid. Uh, these street-level perps, a.k.a. brown nosers, include a type of person used by East Germany, Stasi, the civilian snitch, and then the German word is, I, I can't pronounce it, or unofficial collaborator. Although street-level thugs used in gang-stalking harassment are sometimes recruited from the ranks of criminal informants, many are just unpaid civilian minions who will do almost anything to please someone in a position of authority. For example, under the guise of assisting a, quote, neighborhood watch program or an investigation. Now, right after 911, we had all these little signs come up around Crestone, the neighborhood watch with the big eye. Yeah, yeah. And now we're supposed to be on the lookout for terrorists, right, in our community right. of 1500. Um, a job announcement posted in San Diego and advertised on Craigslist was for a part-time position with an intelligence security contractor, such as InfraGuard, founded by ex-FBI officials, etc. Right. Uh, uh, this part-time position with an intelligence security contracting firm, in other words, a private firm, for, quote, a surveillance role player. These job listings are numerous and are mainly found on the websites of defense contractors. Of course. Funny thing. Uh, U.S. defense budget increased from about $300 billion before 911 to about seven or $800 billion now. And, of course, we know the Air Force was instrumental in pulling off the operation. And, yes, of course, I've been gang-stalked by Air Force people and not retired, right. uh, some of them active duty. Well, of course, they want to keep a lid on that, you know, don't they? Sure. These job listings are numerous and are mainly found on the websites of defense contractors. You can locate them easily by performing an online search for surveillance role player job. There's also a long history of non-governmental organizations perpetrating various serious crimes against their fellow citizens. Such organizations, for example, the Ku Klux Klan and Freemasons and, by the way, various churches and school groups have historically included and communities have in historically included members of the political and law enforcement community. Targets, gangster stalking targets are American citizens deemed to be dissidents or whistleblowers and perhaps potential dissidents and whistleblowers. It should be remembered that for over two decades, the CIA performed secret illegal experiments on US and Canadian citizens, the MKA, MK Ultra program, oh, way over two decades. Those exper experiments include physical and psychological torture. So gang stalking tactics would include perpetual stalking 24-7, invasion of privacy in which your house is broken into and maybe minor things are moved around just to kind of, and of course, bugging of your house and even, you know, eyes, uh, uh, cameras, hidden cameras, threats, electronic harassment with these directed energy weapons, sleep deprivation, blacklisting, mobbing, black bag jobs, gaslighting, if you ever saw the movie Gaslight. Gaslighting. With the, Ingrid Bergman, it shows how that's done. Abusive phone calls, computer hacking, framing, threats, blackmail, vandalism, baiting, mimicking, street theater, in which, again, you have a, a group that is going to, you know, 
you know, throw out words that, you know, they shouldn't know. They shouldn't know this about your personal life and they'll say things like that or they'll put you in a situation which is very uncomfortable. Uh, blocking, cutting off, invasion of personal space, sent sensitization using neural linguistic programming. Uh, sensitization is when the, the targeted individual finally figures out that he's being gang stalked. And at some point, they will make that very clear. And they intentionally do so that once you're sensitized, then each little thing, you know, makes you kind of, oops, you know, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm under harassment and right. attack. So that's the point of that. Noise harassment, high technology noise harassment, hypersound and very high technology noise harassment, the voice of God weapons, right. which are the V2K voice to skull, which was which was figured out by the CIA and, and the MK Ultra back in 1976. So 40 years we've had this V2K voice to skull, voice of God weapon. We've used it elsewhere in, in the world, you know, in Afghanistan and Iraq. We've used it in cults, or the CIA has used it in cults uh, to get these uh, Manchurian channelers. Yeah. Like Elizabeth Cady over at Fenhorn is channeling all these books and, and probably Helen Schickman at Columbia who's who channeled... Uh, psychology professor who channeled uh, um, uh, the, uh, what's the name of the, the Course in Miracles? Course in Miracles, and, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so gang stalking is criminal. It's unconstitutional. Uh, Americans need to recall that we own this country. Uh, here's here's, uh, here's what another sign I put up in Little Crestone. Don't be a gang stalking dupe because right. some of my neighbors, I know these people. I see him driving up and down the road, you know, with, you know, five miles an hour flashing light on top of a, you know, a kind of a citizen uh, fire right. department volunteer, you know, and a local police volunteer. They're thinking they're doing good things, you know. They're, they're believing that, you know, their neighbor is right. some kind of pedophile or terrorist or maybe they didn't right. do their laundry appropriately or whatever. So uh, uh, it is a criminal felony in all 50 states. Every one of these people should be locked up in jail. That's including our local police who are organizing it or taking grants from uh, Department of Homeland Security. And here's, a, here's I took these little figures off of fightgangstalking.com. I, I think maybe you can see them. This kind of shows the, the components of the gang stalking system very Nazi-oriented. America's post-constitutional law enforcement paradigm. Here's the Constitution being burned. Here's Nazis invading Poland. Here's a Nazi doing Sig Heil, blind obedience to authority. The National Security Agency, the CIA, LEIU, Law Enforcement Intelligence Unit, and they think they're really cool because they're cooperating, you know, with the CIA. And now they get to play spy versus spy against the bad guy, see? And the bad guy is their local neighbor. Right. These guys are just scum, you know. Um, East German Stasi. Now, there's the U.S. military counterintelligence agent. Uh, a lot of retirees will jump into this, as I say. Retire early, retire and they do, uh, make more money in the private sector doing this with InfraGuard and other outfits, intelligence security contractors, that's your local spook, and I can name them here. Uh, there's the target, that's you, and there's when they miss the target. <laughs> right. And then over here, a hypersonic sound device, surveillance role players, and these are the dupes on the street, a.k.a. brown nosers, sewer rats, and uh, cockroaches. I like these terms because after a while you get to realize, I, I got to tell you, and then a wall of silence surrounds gang stalking. I got to tell you, as you know, my own personal experience, a lot of these people, not all of them, but you can tell who they are. They have this, they have this look on their face. It's kind of a sneer like that. Yeah. Like that. It's like they, they're tasting something really bad, right. you know, and I, my own interpretation is they have been thoroughly Satanized either by being victims of this program or they were used in this program because they'd been already thoroughly Satanized in some other capacity because this is a Satanic program Absolutely. from top to bottom. This is totally Satanic. And of course, it is also one of the best books. Let me put this again. Another guy, AK4 would probably a, uh, 
probably a pseudonym, but it's called Gang Stalking and Mind Control, the Destruction of Society Through Community Spy Networks, Spying Networks. This guy has been on both ends of it, too. I think he's uh, deceased at the moment. I think he, he was killed a couple years ago. But you can get this book short on Lulu. Um, and uh, this tells you the satanic nature of it. Also tells you the practical nature of it, how to fight back. Fight gang stalking also gives you tips on how to fight back. For instance, if you're in a situation where you're being gang stalked and you know it, just go up to the individual, according to fightgangstalking.com, smile and say, uh, you know, I read that all gang stalkers are brown nosers. Do you think that's true? And then, you know, they're tightly scripted, you know, so yeah. they're going to go, uh, uh, uh. And uh, then you say, scripted, uh, well, it's just a theory, and then you walk off. In other words, that's all you say to these people. In other words, that, that at least gives you, you know, the, the satisfaction of letting them know that you know what's going on, that, right. and then it's not wrecking your life, you know. Right. I've, I've, I've digressed from that strip myself, you know, uh, when I've known that I'm being gang stalked and uh, said different things. I've even handed out some of this literature to them. You know, did you hear about gang stalking? You know, here's a great bumper sticker says fightgangstalking.com. Right. Look up this website. You know, they, I know these people are, you know, were called up to harass me. And uh, so I just go right up to them, you know. And because, uh, again, they're fairly tightly scripted. Um, here's, a, here's an example off of the uh, uh, fight gang stalking uh, website. Public safety notice, gang stalking. This should be in every community in America. I think it's probably much worse in big cities because because you know, easier to, to to flood the place with with gang stalkers. It, it says this neighborhood has ongoing gang stalking activity known as organized stalking. The crime is not related to street gangs; rather, it involves illegal surveillance and harassment of targeted individual individuals by multiple perpetrators, or called perps or brown nosers, working together. Often, the stalking is done for vengeance or to silence potential whistleblowers. Perpetrators who manage organized stalking operations are usually associated with private security intelligence firms or they are corrupt members or former members of the law enforcement community or criminal informants. Tactics include threats and abusive comments, breaking into the victim's residence, slander, lying about the victim, harassment by noise, etc., etc. And then it says uh, tapping phone lines, hacking computers. And, uh, you know, these are violations of laws. You know, there's the California Penal Code, Section 630, 638, and equivalents in all the other states. Um, if people are falsely impersonating a law enforcement personnel, as I gave you the example in that uh, YouTube video, that's violation of California Penal Code, Section 538B. Um, Stalking, maliciously following, harassing, and threatening another person is a violation of California Penal Section 646.9 and may be punishable by up to three years in state prison. Um, so, you know, we got the law on our side. You're right. But the problem is that the law, the watchers, the law enforcement people are on the other side. Right. That's right. Let, let me just give you a few of the resources that I have in my own library to try and stay sane and, and stay alive. This again, gang stalking and mind control, this short, um, this is great. He says, a secret underground lurks throughout society, a sophisticated network of secret policing units that are cropping up in every community. It is made up of people from all walks of life who are operating as a fascist secret police force against all freedom-loving citizens of the Western world. They pretend to be serving a good cause, but they are creating terror in our neighborhoods and, and destroying lives one person at a time. The secret network is not only used for targeting individuals with systematic harassment, but those within it are often involved in sexual exploitation, blackmail, Satanism, and mind control. And I've even heard this guy um, saying this is connected to the white slavery uh, industry and the pedophile industry and the porn industry as well. Uh, 1978, the private sector, George O'Toole, uh, Red cops, private spies, and the police industrial complex. 1978. He right. said half of the million, half of the million police in uh, the United States in 1978 had not sworn to uphold the Constitution or defend Americans. In other words, they're private contractors. That's 1978. And then uh, protectors of privilege. 
uh, by Frank Donner, Red Squads and Police Repression in Urban America. These, these are mostly recommended on the fightgangstalking.com website. L.A. Secret Police Inside the LAPD Elite Spy Network. Top Secret America, The Rise of the New American Security State by Dana Priest and William Arkin. Remote Brain Targeting by Renee Pittman, a compilation of historical information de derived from various sources. Um, covert Technological Murder, also by Renee Pittman. Big Brother Approved. Uh, this by Dr. John Hall, a physician, a new breed satellite terrorism in America, talking about satellite harassment through electronics. Uh, and he he has been targeted, and he his lady friend was targeted, wrecked their relationship. Sure. The Watchers, The Rise of America's Surveillance State by Shane Harris. This one's good. The Hidden Evil, The Financial Elite's Covert War Against the Civilian Population by... Mark M. Rich, Closing the Gap, Gang Stalking, Community Notifications, The System Awareness Registry, Registry Citizen Informants by G.M. B. Bailey, <clears throat> Spies for Hire, The Secret World of Police Outsourcing by Tim Chirac, The Snitch Culture, 1999 or 2000, How Citizens Are Turned into the Eyes and Ears of the State, that's really good. I got a, I got a little insight. Uh, according to this book, you know the story of uh, Ruby Ridge and uh, Randy Reaver, Weaver, who was shot by the FBI. The FBI also shot his wife and kid. Um, according to this, the FBI, because he was a former special operations guy from the military, they, they expected him to spy on his neighbors. And he said, to hell with that. I'm not going to spy on my neighbors. And then they, then they framed him and shot him. Yeah. So it really comes back down to you're going to cooperate because you were in the military. That's that story anyway. Right. Uh, Blackwater, the rise of the world's most powerful mercenary army. Of course, they were uh, the contractor that went into Iraq, the private contractor that made fortunes on the uh, war in Iraq of 2003 of George W. Bush. The rise of the warrior cop, the militarization of America's police forces. And then lastly... A Government of Wolves, the Emerging American Police State, John W. Whitehead. So it's not a question of, you know, <laughs> maybe we're going to have a police state. We have a police state. Right. And now the question is, uh, what can we do about it to defend ourselves? So I think I'll stop there. I, I've given you kind of the, the, the outline of it. And again, there's a heck of a lot more information about this on the seven posts that I have on my 911nwo.com website. So for your listeners who want to research this for free, I'm not charging anything. I'm trying to educate people. Uh, the more people know about this and the more people stand up to it. Uh, I personally, I think this means the end of American society. Because once America wakes up to this, it's, it's game over. If Americans are awake enough to uh, take back their country. Because this is intolerable. And this, of course, led to the downfall of East Germany, uh, the Soviet Union, and the repressive dictatorships in Hungary and Poland and Portugal. So once the American people realize the degree of criminality of our watchers, our protectors, who's going to watch the watchers, right. um, then things are going to change. And again, that might be, of course, they are trying to instigate a, a race war. Uh, and, and a civil war. So this, this could be a component of that. Um, yeah, there's a heck of a lot of guns in America. And, uh, right. you know, it's a kind of a debate about uh, you know, who would win in a standoff between the military and, and the population. I'll go with the population every day right. uh, if it's awake. And so that's right. my goal is to wake up the population. Uh, gang stalking, organized stalking, counterintelligence stalking, is treating us, the American people, as the enemy. And it, it is trying to kill us. And right. our self-defense is going to have to be very vigorous. In other words, uh, it's not a matter of survival. We have to counterattack. And that's why I want to get on every radio show I can get on uh, to give out the information. Because, you know, Goebbels, the, uh, the German propaganda minister under Hitler, said the truth is the greatest enemy of the state. Right. And uh, what we have is a state, criminal state, and, and truth is their greatest enemy. 
So, you know, guys like Alex Jones, even Donald Trump seems to be talking some truth, you know. Right. Uh, truth is truth is our best weapon. Right. Um, I'm not, uh, you know, for pulling out a gun and shooting one of these dupes, you know, or these brown nosers. But I am for embarrassing them and thwarting them. I've got a bumper sticker on my truck that says gang stalking is murder. I've got another one that says gang stalkers go to hell. I've got another one that says uh, Department of Homeland Terrorism. And another one that says the Department of Homeland Spying. Right. And I drive my Ford F-150 truck around and, and people see these bumper stickers. And I put these notices up. So I'm, I'm sure that I'm red flagged in many ways. Um, I, I have been a target for many years and I could tell some stories, but I don't, I don't know that how fruitful that is, but I can give impressions. Maybe that's more, more fruitful. So I'll stop there, Paul. And, and if you want to launch off into a particular direction that you're, fascinated by let's let's do that well i'm totally fascinated by the subject and i think there's a massive awakening now uh we had a brexit vote where people in the uk were awake enough to try to push out of that i don't know whether they're going to get out we, we had the dnc where uh, the the bernie supporters as much as i'm not a bernie supporter uh protested, wa wa uh, walked out, changed their shirts so they would glow, do, do what they could to stand out, and then they banned them, and they had to hire people to fill up the seats. So I think, I think we are in a great awakening, especially, you know, in the Western culture. Uh, and I think your idea of a counterattack is the only way to go. I read a quote the other day that... Uh, no campaign has ever been won on the defense. You've got, you've got to have the offense. And I think uh, Bernie supporters, as much as I'm not a Bernie supporter, they, they did uh, take the offense. And I think when people find out about this gang stalking, I mean, we used to be, we used to look at Cuba and every, everybody used to say that one out of three Cubans is working for the government, watching everybody else. And then we have the social justice warriors who are patrolling our language, cutting down the words that we can use because they might be offensive. I mean, the whole thing is, is ganging up on logical, rational people. And I think what's happening is we're waking up and moving back. And I think knowing about gang stalking has got to be the next step because they're, they're doing it to a, a vast percentage of us. And the people they're not doing it to are probably working for them. So, so what, what do we really need to know, uh, other than the fact that it's, it's a government-wide program, it's on all different levels, individual security agencies are coming, are, are working for it, uh, and they're spying on us. Uh, if we could get to the people who are doing it, who are unwittingly duped into doing this, uh, go ahead. Absolutely. And that's one of the reasons why I have, you know, you, you, after a while you get kind of bored with the whole thing and you think, well, I'll try this and I'll try that, you know, right. and you have to kind of take the offensive a little bit. So I would go up and hand out a leaflet, you know, the gang stalking is going on in our community. And of course I'll nail these around our, our town too. I usually come down in several days, but then I go back two weeks later mm -hmm. and put it up again. And, uh, you know, I'm sure that this has ruffled some feathers, including the local police. However, again, what they're doing is illegal, unconstitutional, immoral, and, uh, you know, lawsuits need to happen. Right. Um, individuals need to be identified, uh, named, and lawsuits need to happen. Now, I have sent my gang stalking action pack to our local county commissioners. Um, I have uh, written letters on this, not complaining about my own situation, but complaining about this phenomenon. And I've gone to some of our local uh, county commissioners' meetings, and I intend to go to some more. Uh, this was the recommendation of one of the guys who did a nice YouTube on this. And he's saying, yeah, this is uh, coming from Department of Homeland Security grants to your local county right. and your local police force, and uh, to at least a large extent. and. Uh, Yes, they are using the local first responders, and yes, they are getting money for it, 
And if you have a poor county like Sawatch County where I live, you know, they're, they're always attracted. Um, by the way, I, I had this little cut, I guess I showed you, no big yeah. deal. But I went to a, a community uh, clinic in Alamosa yesterday. And because they're government funded, I could not believe the number of questions that were asked of me that had nothing to do with my cut. Whoa. So, like, yeah, like, so this, like is, what? this is what this has this is what has happened uh, with these government grants infiltrating. Now we have the federalization dictatorship, really, of the local and community and state level. And uh, really, this is what we're fighting, uh, a criminal federal government with tentacles into all branches. Now, that said, it's not always just the government. It's some, and a private individual with means yeah. could target an individual with this technology because there are so many right. private contractors out there. They just get on the phone and say, okay, take him out or take her out or discredit him or whatever. And, you know, Marie Strong, we've talked about, is the guy who wrote Agenda 21 right. for the United Nations, presided over the Rio Earth Summit of, uh, well, 1992 and 2012, Rio Plus 20, and wants to redesign the whole world's economy with Agenda 21, Agenda for the 21st Century, now called Agenda 2030, in which you get this vertical integration between the upper levels up to the UN and down to the local community level. That's local Agenda 21. So you could say that there's a lot of overlap between what's going on here and Agenda 21, and that the gang stalking might be a way to enforce sure. this Agenda 21. Now, of course, global warming is just the centerpiece of that bogus uh, uh, political restructuring, which involves you know, vast depopulation of the world's population and deindustrialization of the industrial countries, the pouring of Europe and America, et cetera. Uh, this is the goal, and lots of statements by Marie Strong and others uh, prove that. Uh, isn't it our, you know, to save the earth, isn't it our responsibility to destroy the industrial economies? I mean, right. and this guy doesn't have a high school diploma. Right. He doesn't know squat about science. He doesn't know squat about global warming. He doesn't know squat about climate change. But he does have a communist political agenda, which is wrapped in an environmental religion. Right. And of course, we're in, in Crestone here, where we have many, many different religions and cults. Um, well, a guy like Marie Strong, who actually in the 70s was with Canadian Invest, uh, uh, International Development Agency, CETA, had a whole network of spies in Africa. Top to bottom, right? And he's a protege of the Rockefellers and the Rota and the, and the Rothschilds. So here's one guy, billionaire through gas and oil and water and all kinds of robber baron kind of shenanigans. Start a company here, you know, bankrupt it there, make money here, blah blah blah. Um, using the environmental movement as a front for this uh, this political agenda of one world government, basically, um, he could do it. And if the man is still alive, he might have every incentive to, uh, to uh, you know, throw out a you know, half a million and say, get Eric Carlstrom, because he's got a website about, it's called Water Watch Alliance, and it's all about the water issues in the uh, San Luis Valley. And uh, by golly, Marie Strong and his uh, American Water Development Incorporated tried to take that water, right. this guy from Canada, uh, take that water and make a billion dollars by selling it over to Denver. Well. We're, we're into a, a level of lawlessness here that most people can't even conceive. Right. These, the Rockefellers, Rothschilds, Marie Strong, these, this strata, Committee of 300, they are, believe they're completely above the law. And uh, they've got made it stick, you know. So uh, it could be a private individual that is, you know, targeting, wanting to target uh, certain individuals. But bottom line, it's global. Since 911, uh, the CIA, the FBI, the local police, all the intelligence agencies, the alphabet soup, 19 of them or whatever, the walls have come down. And now we have these fusion centers and this huge Utah data center over near Salt Lake City where all of our emails and all of our phone right. calls are stored. And uh, uh, this stuff can be coordinated. And, and some people envision that, you know, hey, in a few years, this whole program could be administrated by one guy on his workstation, you know, with computers yeah. and directed energy weapons, you know. So, well, we, we, I don't know that we have all that much time to expose this 
and get people held accountable um, with with lawsuits and uh, public publicizing. You know, these people that write these books, they're they're pretty brave. They they get themselves out there. Um, but that's what we need. We need people to stand up and say, right. "This is America. We have a constitution. Right. You're you're breaking all the laws, and uh, you go to jail right. for doing that." Now, I, I read, uh, and the blacks are heavily targeted. I, I did a, a little interview with uh, Deanna Spingola, in which I mentioned gang stalking, and I got some letters from, uh, I think it was a lady, no, it didn't sign it, out of uh, Sacramento, and signed it Black Lives Matter. And she said, you know, our community is heavily targeted with gang stalking, blacks. Well, of course, if you want to institute a race war. Right. You've got to control you know, Target the blacks. And they've always targeted blacks for mind control because they're deemed more expendable. The CIA has targeted blacks right, right. from the beginning with the Tuskegee syphilis experiments, right. et cetera. You know, I mean, um, you know, we're, we're supposed to have this race war with the blacks. But what I see is that a lot of the blacks have, have woken up a lot more than the whites right. because they have been targeted for longer. And there's one one black lady who I adore. You know, she gets on the inter YouTube and she said, "Well, look at what I've got here. This is a release form that the cops make the perpetrator sign before they go out and do their gang stalking, which releases the police of all uh, responsibility if that perpetrator is killed by the person they're targeting." Well, of course, this this is to drive people crazy. Right. So a certain percentage are going to fight back and kill or harm their stalkers. And so now you have a form that this lady found, I think is in Pennsylvania, in which the police department is, is actually getting their perpetrators to sign this release form saying that if you're hurt, we're not responsible. Now, I guess I could use the word chicken shit. Uh, you know, these, these people are, you know, I mean, obviously they're following, you know, orders. They're following, the, all these things are hierarchical. Right. There's a script, you know, do this, do this, do this, and you get some money. But, you know, and make them sign this and make them sign that. But but it's so outrageous that uh, you'd think people would wake up. You know? Well, it doesn't. You see, I think everybody thinks that if I'm not doing anything wrong, I don't have to worry about anything. And right. boy, that's that's as that's as effective as the old calling someone a conspiracy theorist, because when you say, well, I'm not doing anything wrong, you know, it blo it's people like Paul Marco and Eric Carlstrom that are targeted because they're trying to disrupt the whole government. Well, it's not. It's inter it's you're being surveilled all the time. There's no privacy now, and if you start deviating from the from the general line of thinking, you're going to be you're going to be looked at and targeted. I think Eric, uh, could you try to bring it home to the average person? You're an average guy. Well, you're a highly educated average academician who's decided to do something very courageous. Uh, and I'm sure uh, you thought about it a lot before you got into this. How did this, what, how, how did this happen to you? I, you know, what I, I want to do, I want to try to, to make it so they could see that we're no different than they are. Yeah? And this happens to normal people. Can you give us a story or uh, how this? <laughs> uh, give, give you my story. Well, yeah, that's good. Um, I think my story is, uh, I don't really understand my story completely. Uh, but um, I would have been, I grew up in the DC area and uh, my dad and my uncle were very close. Uh, both worked for the US government. Okay, one with the CIA and my dad with the U.S. Geological Survey. Yeah. Okay, I would have been born in 1949 and grown up during the 50s. Okay, what was going on in 1949 in the 50s? Alan Dulles was the head of the CIA. Right. And I did a long extended piece on my website about Alan Dulles, kind of the rest of the story. And Alan Dulles, who was a Wall Street lawyer, along with his brother John Foster Dulles, bragged that he controlled President Eisenhower. And I'm sure he did. Yes. And so what you had is you had Wall Street, which, of course, Rockefeller it's, it's really the Rockefeller, Harriman, Bush, Dulles faction that controlled not only American policy, but all these coups all over the world during the 50s and 60s and 70s, et cetera, and right to the, to the present. So we have this 
push towards one world government that's coming out of Wall Street, connected to the city of London, and the Nazis come out of that nexus because the, the, this nexus of Wall Street and the city of London, the international bankers, created the Soviet Union with the, with the Bolshevik Revolution and presided over that hellish nightmare state. Uh, their people did for 70 years. They also created Nazis, uh, the Nazis as, a, as an occult group, um, in order again to foment wars that are very profitable, etc. But more than that, to bring in the Superman. Right. Not to, that was what Hitler was all about, bringing in this, I would have to say, satanic Superman. Yeah. Which does involve the mind control and Joseph Mengele and the, the, the fracturing of the personalities by trauma-based mind control of children, uh, which the Illuminati families, the bloodlines, have been doing for eons. You know, right. This is how they control their own. So you would have a front personality uh, which may or may not be co-conscious with all these subaltern personalities in your subconscious. And then if they need a, you know, if they need a super soldier or need a, need a, a beautiful woman to seduce somebody or to somebody to gather information with a photographic memory, these, these subalters have been programmed and, and can be triggered by handlers. So the U.S. government got into that in the 40s and 50s and 60s, and it still is. And, of course, that story is told in uh, The Born Identity. But, again, there's a twist on it. You know, in The Born Identity, he volunteered. Well, these people don't volunteer. Right. When they're raped, they're less than six years old. Right. And that's how the trauma-based mind control gets started. And that's one of the many ways. And uh, uh, so and the child... Uh, in order to survive, has to split off another personality. That's the only way they can survive this trauma. Right. After, after six, the individuals subjected to great trauma have, you know, shell shock or post-traumatic stress disorder, we call it now, uh, PTSD. But less than six, you split off another personality, and then if there's a programmer or a handler right there, they can name it, they can uh, uh, give it an identity, they can even insert a demon... Right. If you read, the, they can insert an animal spirit, a wolf spirit or something. I mean, it's crazy. You can't believe this stuff. But I do have a whole 60-page article about the history and the um, applications of mind control. It took me a year to write that. And after I finished that and posted it, I knew that Satan exists. Yes. Before that, I was sort of agnostic. But you could, this sort of activity could not be done without an extremely malevolent spirit uh, or spirits uh, involved. Uh, human beings would not do this to each other under normal conditions. So anyway, um, my story is that I grew up in the D.C. area at the time when the MKUltra stuff was just getting started. That was 1953. Mm -hmm. I don't know, you know, between zero and six, most people have fuzzy memories. I don't think I was a... Abuse. Subject, right? But my uncle was in the CIA, and those were the the relatives of the children, and the relatives of military and and intelligence people were the ones who then became the rock stars over in Laurel Canyon. Sure. That's the story that Dave McGowan told. Most of these kids then would have been subject to this kind of mind control abuse training, and then would have been made famous and used for a while. And then if their programming starts to go haywire, like Maybe Jimi Hendrix uh, did at the age of 27, and maybe Jim Morrison at 27, and you know Tim Buckley at 31, and and uh, you know, and then uh, Cass Elliot, she had to go for whatever reason, you know. Right. So a lot of these people died early, after they had a meteoric rise to fame, supported by the whole military intelligence, press, media, entertainment industry. So I mean, that's how coordinated it was back in the 60s. You know, right. it's, it's very coordinated now. So anyway, my story is I come out of that. We moved to Arizona when I was in high school because dad was going to help map the moon because he was a geologist. And uh, then I, you know, tried to live a normal life, went through college, uh, uh, you know, became a professor. And as far as I can tell, I'm, you know, fairly highly functioning. But um, uh, and when the gang stalking goes started, uh, I think maybe... Uh, the, some of the powers that be did not want me to get my PhD or finish my master's. Oh, back that far? Yeah, back in the 70s. And I think that it was considered by some people in the intelligence community that it would not be a good idea if I went into this field. In other words, that is how controlled 
yeah. or at least parts of our environment are. And, you know, I can tell you story after story about, you know, being denied tenure here, not not actually denied tenure, but an attempt uh, and, and being kind of squeezed out of this university because my father and I were there together, right. maybe considered too strong a power block because we actually understood climate change right. between the two of us. He put in a whole career on it and so did I. And, uh, you know, I was eased out of Northern Arizona University, uh, you know, this kind of thing. And I can tell you all the story. I don't know if I'll ever get around to writing it, but it's a, it's, it's not a happy one. <laughs> You know, is 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 it early harassment? That's a eighty six, right. uh, and then in the nineties, uh, same thing at Cal State University. Well, you know, I'm not a bad professor, so for whatever reason, I was being targeted even within right. the university. Right. But I but I persevered, and then after leaving, um, and then experiences at the university told me I'm being watched, and then after leaving, it's gotten. Uh, you know, anywhere I go, you know, right. could be North Carolina, could be Texas, wherever I go, there's going to be some, some evidence of that kind of coordinated activity. Uh, not always hostile, sometimes just watching, sometimes just, uh, you yeah. know, a, a honey trap, uh, you know, pretty girl over here with a, right. with a guy, a good old boy from Texas in a truck over here watching, you know, Right. And she's she's the bait and I'm supposed to, you know, fall for it and blah, blah, blah. You know, these kinds of setups, you know, uh, not uncommon. And I probably give you a half a dozen of those over the last four years, all of which seem to have, uh, you know, this guy in the background watching. Right. So so and sometimes military, sometimes military out of Albuquerque, because a lot of this is coming from ex-military SAIC. I mean, these are the guys that did 911. Right. These are the guys that did the directed energy weapons that brought down 911. Well, yeah, they've got every incentive sure. to squash legitimate uh, queries about uh, about 911, especially from an academic who can actually understand perhaps what happened. Yes. And in 2002, you asked me about you know my experience. In 2002, I wrote a 50-page paper, academic style uh, reflections on the origins of 911, three scenarios. And I, you know, first scenario, Osama bin Laden did it. Right. Easy to disprove that. Second scenario, it's blowback. You know, we, we've right. done so many bad things over in the Middle East that they finally got ticked off and they attacked us. Right. You can easily disprove that. The Muslims didn't didn't have much to do with it. Right. Uh, it was uh, mostly the third, which is that it's an inside job. Um, and then the nuance to that is we have various fifth column groups in America that have commandeered our highest levels right. of, of military and, and government. So yes, America did it. Yes, American service people did it, but who controls America? Right. And, right. and then of course, that's a big part of my website, who controls America? And that also is fairly easy to demonstrate. And uh, yeah, you got your Nazis and you got your international bankers for sure. And, uh, you know, you've got the Wall Street connection and you've got the Illuminati bloodlines and all those things, you know. Um, America is not con controlled by its own citizens anymore. Right. And uh, so therefore, with these lies, you know, they have to they have to keep us in, this, in the dark with all these lies. You know, 911 was right. done by Osama bin Laden or, or a few years later, it's Saddam Hussein or a few years later, now it's Saudi Arabia. Oh, that's bullshit. I mean, sorry, United States government. Uh, was or the highest levels were integral, integrally involved. Likewise, the global warming thing, easy to disprove. So, so in terms of my own experience, uh, things have ramped up in the last uh, uh, since I retired in 2011, and during the last uh, uh, several months, I think directed energy weapons have been applied to me in my home, and I've been sick as a dog. You know, right. all of a sudden, with you know multiple symptoms that don't make sense. You know, and I'm flat on my back and can't water the plants, you know. So uh, things that don't make sense, you know. Well, that does make sense if you consider that, you know, there's a, there's a standard progression of, there's a sequence that occurs with targeted individuals and you eventually work up to being assaulted with directed energy weapons, right. you know. And so this is standard. And you, 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 you know, you get quotes from other people, you read books, and you realize that a lot of us are being subject to the same kinds of, it's a program. You can call it the program. Right. And you can say that who's directing it is the cult. 
Right. And it is a satanic cult. So it is vertically integrated right from street level to the highest uh, Illuminati bloodlines. Right. Uh, and it is satanic. And it is, it is a way not only to control the targeted individuals, but also the perps. Right. Because th they will also be threatened. If you don't do this right, you could be targeted. Right. And you're so it's, it's, a, it's a total control system. This is, this is Orwell and Brave New World coming true in a dystopian uh, tyranny in, in the greatest country the world's ever seen, a free country, supposedly right. the United States of America. And your biggest crime is the fact that you're bright, articulate, and can do research. Yeah, and then I put it out there. Like I say, when I wrote this paper in 2002, Reflections on the Origins of 911, there was a big debate. Should I put my name on it or not? Right. Because there was so much fear at that time, most people didn't. But I decided I'm going to put my name on it because it gives it more impact. Right, it does. It does. said Dr. Eric T. Carlstrom, Department of Geography, California State University, Stanislaus. Right. This is who I am. This is where I'm from. I've been a professor X number of years. And uh, therefore, you know, maybe uh, take this a little seriously. It has big, long bibliography of references, you know. So using the standard academic style, I would be one of the few academics who was not put in this box of, okay, I just gotta do this. <laughs> right. Of course, geography is a fairly broad synthetic field anyway. And uh, they even say geography is what geographers do. And it can be human geography, it can be physical geography, and it can bleed over from one to the next. Sure. So in that sense, I had a, a lot of, quote, latitude right. uh, to, uh, to move towards the political realm. Because we have political geographers, we have economic geographers, we have, you know, cultural geographers. We have, I'm a physical geographer, but I've moved into these realms because I, I think it's uh, critical. Our government can't be, uh, uh, well, scaring people with terrorism. Deception and terrorism is, you go back to the, you know, go back to the Old Testament. That's how you control people, deception right. and terror. And uh, there's nothing new about it. That's what they did in the Soviet Union. That's what they did the Nazis. And, you know, go right on back through history. Well, that's all being applied in America, the land of the free right now. Yeah. Well, and now, that's not to say that all military and police people are bad. There's a heck of a lot of good ones, I think. But there's also a lot of them that are going to go along with the program. Sure. You know. Percentage. So, so you've got, uh, so you've got all your various groups managed in various different ways. Uh, you've got the satanic control system, and if there's any question of that, my God, you have to look at the top two presidential candidates. One worships Apollo, which is Lucifer. The other is a, the other is a witch, and they, <laughs> they're probably the two most corrupt people. Uh, both. Uh, uh, you know, associated with pedophilia. So, so it's a satanic control system. So they control most of the people with TV. They keep them asleep. And as long as they don't do anything, uh, they can be so asleep that they can be involved in perpetrating the gang stalking. You've got another bunch of people who are mind controlled from the jump. They're MK Ultra, And I would say that... Uh, Oh, I, I don't know, a, a large percentage of people because because there's not only uh, there's not only MK Ultra mind control. Uh, we also go into cloning and all, all other ways of controlling people, showing them in different ways. You've got the whole entertainment industry and politics, and they're if they're not controlled directly satanically, they're controlled through uh, 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 bribes. Uh, they'll, pedophilia is a good way to control people. And then there's the people who are waking up and trying to do something. They're trying to move forward, like you are. Uh, the other one that always talks about gang stalking is Lorraine Murray. I don't know whether you know who that is. She, yeah, I've interviewed her a couple times, yeah. yeah She's an amazing woman. Uh, we'll always talk about gang stalking and what happened to her that week. And she's been hit many times, she's told, she's told on interviews. Uh, by directed energy weapons. Uh, sometimes I think we are here, but it's another topic. So well, yeah, again, yeah, satellite, uh, it's possible from satellites. That means no place on the, on the earth is out of, out of reach. We've, we've got 
cell towers all around here. They could, I mean, at any, at any moment. So that's the control system for the people that are waking up. And I guess the only way to try to beat that is be offensive. We've got to wake people up to what gang stalking is, try to get people not to do that, uh, so, that the, so that maybe there's a critical mass once you get so many people that are awakened to gang stalking and how to avoid it and what it's doing to their lives, the children's lives and everything. So that, that's why I thought that we could really try to make it as vivid as we can because people have to realize, unless they're sound asleep, and if they're watching this, they're not sound asleep. If they're right. interested in gang stalking and they, they know me or they know you, they're not sound asleep. So if those people can be aware of gang stalking and start talking it up. For me, before we started this interview, actually it was kind of a nebulous thing. Who's doing it? What are they doing? How can they hurt you? Um, but you, I think you just through your last hour of talking made it really real for me. And I hope we've made it real for uh, everybody watching. Because this is, this is it. This is how they're going to control you as you wake up. Yes, and not only that, um, one of the first, uh, in fact, I've got on my website, if, if people are interested in going to my 911nwo.com website, they can look under three main categories. One is New World Order, one is uh, New World Religion, question mark, and another one's called The Controllers. And they can look and they can see that I have an Appendix 29, or excuse me, Appendix 9, and then an Appendix 20, an Appendix 23, and then I've got a, another one called Follow the Money, another one called the CIA Tavistock, and the Global Intelligence Police Gestapo State. And I've got a whole bunch of quotes from victims of gang stock. Excuse me for a second. Okay, hold on. I, I just hung up there, Paul. Um, okay, if they but, don't uh, call back, we're cool. If no, I know who it is, okay. so I'll call them. But... Um, you know, so the gang stalking quotes quotes people who are victims of this, and you get a you get a sense of uh, what it is. But in my appendix nine, which is the first one I put together, I quoted extensively a, a woman named Julianne McKinney. Julianne McKinney uh, was an intelligence officer herself, and uh, she's very articulate. She's written a book about directed energy weapons and gang stalking, and I've actually got that interview on my appendix nine. Uh, posted there, and she, what she says is that this could be the technique, or she says this will be the technique that they use to genocide um, the the population of the world. In other words, we could be looking at a mass genocide event uh, using these technologies. Um, again, it's a whole series of, you know, bag of tricks that includes mind right. control and harassment surveillance right up to directed energy. And of course, the directed energy, the non-lethal weapons, um, has the potential, you know, through HARP and other things like that, to, uh, to destroy uh, the vast majority of the human race. So, yeah, I'd say this is kind of important. Right. Um, and if people don't even know uh, what's going on, uh, I, I think fear is a big part of it. Again, you know, I, I look at my own family. You know, they, they're busy doing their own things. They don't want to know about this. Right. My own family. You know, they, you can't talk to them Same about Same with this. us. Same with us. You know, and, and of course, they do want to isolate you from your family. They want to isolate you from your friends, all to, you know, make you more apt to commit suicide or be easier to take out. Now, Dave McGowan, the guy who wrote that great book on the weird scenes of Laurel Canyon, uh, he died of a fast on, onset cancer within the last year or so. But he, I looked at his interviews, it sounded like he had been atomized and isolated. Yes. Uh, in other words, there's the kind of guy who's a threat to the system. He figured out what's going on. And he wrote a book which got very popular. Right. So, so he then became an enemy of the state in somebody's list, right. some notification list, um, and then was, I, I would say, murdered. I'd say his, his murder is on the, his blood is on the hands, uh, in the, uh, uh, on the hands of, of our national security state, our, our Gestapo 
uh, Stasi police state. Right. Or a private contractor, could be InfraGuard, uh, CSL Nebulous, you know. Um, but uh, I would say he's murdered. And uh, this is not acceptable. This is completely not acceptable. There needs to be a there needs to be an accounting. There needs to be a, a trial. There needs to be a. Uh, now I can tell you a story. Have you ever heard of Judy Berry? Judy Berry? No, I don't think so. Okay, well, back in the I guess it would be the '90s, she was a, an environmental activist in California. Quite, quite. Uh, you know, she was a fiddle player, and her partner was Dale Cherney, who played guitar. And they wrote lots of songs, and they went from campus to campus, and you know, sang about the redwoods and tried to radicalize the students. Mm -hmm. And evidently, they were having some success because the FBI put a bomb in her car wow. and uh, and it blew up when she got in it and she was crippled, not killed, uh, but um, she died a few years later. Anyway, I was it was a trial was in Oakland, California. She was from the Bay Area and I lived in Turlock, Central Valley. So I went to her trial one day and uh, there were the FBI guys at the front, you know, suits flat top haircuts look, you know, perfect Nazi types. And uh, Judy Berry's, uh, uh, yeah, she's pretty obnoxious, so, you know, in your face. She's, she's, uh, but you know, they killed her. You know, they bombed her. Right. And those guys, uh, I think they got away with it, you know, because they had the good lawyers. Uh, and uh, so again, FBI uh, uh, took out 28 Black Panthers in, right. the, in the 60s with the COINTELPRO. Right. It's 28 to 0, FBI 28, Black Panther 0. Right. Well, it was doing this kind of setup thing, doing these dirty tricks against individuals to right. neutralize them and eventually kill them. Right. So this program has legs in our country that goes way back, you know, 100 years. But, uh, yeah, the idea that uh, a citizen becomes inconvenient and the state's going to take them out, totally unacceptable. Illegal, unconstitutional, and immoral. Right. And these are elected officials, many of whom swear to uphold the Constitution. That's right. uh, well, you, so they're, 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 they're lying bastards, you know, right. the ones who are involved. You've got uh, Hillary is just uh, in the last two months, I think it was June, July, took out five people who were writing things about her, her past. Right. I mean, it, right. it still happens right now. I mean, they just send them yeah. out and they're gone. Yeah, there's a big trail of bodies beyond the Clintons, and certainly the Bushes, right? Because they're all ganged up, the Bushes and the Clintons. Um, but yeah, this is this is huge. Uh, we're dealing with a mafioso. You know, I, I got wise to this pretty quick. I was in the D.C. area when uh, John F. Kennedy was shot. I was 14, and I would glance at the you know Washington Post and read about such and such a witness who was going to testify tomorrow. You know, died in a car wreck or. You know, yeah. had a uh, heart attack or whatever. It was about fifty bodies that, were, right. you know, of, uh, <laughs> you know, and you, you, even if you're fourteen, you you figure out there's a pattern there. Right. You know? in, <laughs> in other words, this was a mafia style hit too, uh, and now the cover up, you know. Right. And uh, so, yeah, these are these are coups, you know, the JFK coup, um, and the nine one one coup. Uh, these are these are incremental. Uh, um, takeovers of, right. of the United States. Yeah. Right. Let me let me mention another thing. You mentioned gaslighting, and gaslighting is an amazing phenomenon. That's where you you try to convince somebody that they're crazy. And uh, the reason I think that this is important, I mean, I think that well, I know from the feedback that a lot of people are waking up. They come to Pinecone Utopia, our site, and they, they can get some information from you, other interviews or things that I've said. And as they awaken, they're going to realize that the mainstream media and mainstream uh, uh, thought is going to try to gaslight them. Now, gaslight them, try to make them think that they're crazy. Well, first of all, they'll call them a conspiracy theorist, which is, you know, that's a... That's a well-designed term started by the by the uh, the CIA under Hoover, the Kennedy administration, uh, to make people who disagreed with the normal way seem like they're nuts. But that's the whole. I think the whole uh, role of mainstream media in terms of the awakening community 
to try to convince our families, our kids, that we're crazy because we're waking up. It's a gaslighting function. Uh, I, I, I would even consider it gang stalking uh, on a, at a media level to try to make us less credible. But it's an amazing thing that's happening now. So we're all, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, and, and in, in that regard, I mean, uh, I've done a lot of writing about the New World Religion and a whole series on my 911nwo.com site uh, entitled Is Crestone Baca Where I Live? Right. Founded more or less by Marie Strong and his wife, these international uh, figures. Um, uh, is Crestone Baca the Vatican City of the New World Order an expose of the New World uh, Religion? Well, we've got like over 30 spiritual groups, you know, from all over the world. Right. We're, we're kind of an interfaith utopia, if you will. Right. Um, uh, but uh, but basically, I, I went through, you know, part one through, I think, 12 now, and then some 30 appendices. Uh, I think part four or five, I think it's part five, uh, it talks about some of the think tanks and what they did in the 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70s. One of them was uh, <clears throat> the Macy conferences, the mind machine uh, conferences, set up by Gregory Bates, who's an anthropologist out of uh, Britain who worked with the CIA during World War II. Uh, he married Margaret Mead, another anthropologist, and it was a very small interdisciplinary group that did these famous Macy conferences. But, but basically, Gregory Bateson's goal was to figure out how to produce symptoms that mimicked schizophrenia. In other words, how to make people look crazy through external circumstances and behavior that is not crazy, but would make the public or the press or the police Think or whatever. Crazy. So, so just as you say, there's been an enormous amount of attention uh, given to our, you know, our media system and our propaganda system, how to drive people crazy and or make it seem like they're crazy or crazy enough so that they're discredited. So I, I'm totally agreeing with your point. And, and that these psychological techniques are embedded into our government media system. Um, and, I, and I'm sure they have a certain amount of success in driving a certain percentage of people crazy because oh. things are crazy out there, you know. Oh, but, I, uh, yeah. I would imagine that's what social media is for. Yeah. Find out how successful they are, how many people are crazy now. But there's something that they're really censoring social media now. So maybe uh, that role is becoming less important. You know, if I wanted to know what was going on, I'd want to let, let the social media go and I'd watch it. I might try to control it one way or another, but I certainly wouldn't shut it down because I want to know where guys like Eric Carlson and Paul Marco are. Uh, yeah. Now they're even shutting that down. So I don't know whether that's a, that's a change in their strategy to gaslight us all. Or I guess they're just shutting off our access to, to people. Yeah, you know, I'm not on social media per se. I don't have Facebook. I don't have a cell phone. I don't have uh, anything like that. But, of course, I have my websites. And uh, you hear rumors, you know, that they're going to shut down the Internet or whatever. Uh, I hope that doesn't happen, but we'll see. Because, as you say, the, the, the watchers get an enormous amount of information from right. these social media, so they benefit from it. Uh, you know, who's doing what, et cetera. People just seem to want to, you know, put themselves out there. Right. Uh, you know, oh, I was, I was at the zoo this morning, you know, and I saw my best friend and, you know, and then I spilled my ice cream cone and then blah, 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 yeah. you know, <laughs> as, if, as if it matters, you know. Yeah. But, but they've got all that data somewhere in Utah, you know, at, these, uh, uh, at this data center. And uh, who knows where it's going, but... Um, there's got to be pushback. We have to push back and we have to be clever about it. We have to figure out how to how to convict these criminals because we're dealing right. with a criminal operation. Um, again, unconstitutional, illegal and immoral uh, violates at least two of the Ten Commandments. Um, and if you want to be part of that system, you know, you're on the wrong side of the law. And yet there's right. there's uh, there's you know, there's got to be millions that are on that side of the system. There, well, there's also got to be ways that we can, on an individual basis, push back. Like you're confronting your gang stalkers. 
I think that's, yeah. that's really important. And recognizing when you've been hit by a, uh, a directed energy weapon, you know? So. Yeah, well, you know, um, <laughs> when all of a sudden you can't make it to the bathroom because you fall down, uh, right. you know, you know something's uh, a little haywire, you know. Right. I'm, I've climbed mountains all over the world, you know, and I'm very strong still at my age. And uh, if I can't make it, if I have to crawl to the bathroom, I know something's wrong. Right. That's not normal. <laughs> well, so, yeah. Yeah. This stuff is very serious. Uh, you know, things are coming to a head. I do believe, uh, uh, you know, faith is important for me. And I think for many of the targeted individuals, um, you know, again, going back to the black ladies, you know, that post, you know, pray up, you know, get get uh, get right with right. God, uh, um, get right with Jesus. Um, you know, you're, you're really hanging on against some very powerful and formidable and, and malevolent forces. Right. So you've got to have something, uh, I would suggest, um, maybe a lot of people can go it alone, but uh, I would suggest that um, those of us who are inclined towards, you know, uh, say Christian faith in my case, uh, would, would be then forced into uh, uh, embracing it uh, on a more, uh, more daily basis. Because a lot of times these these events are on a daily basis, you know. Right. Well, yeah. Well, I think you need to need to realize that uh, God is in charge, even though uh, right. Even though we're going through what seems to be horrendous times, that, right. Uh, that that's that's always that's always there in the back of my mind, and I always wanted to know. I always wanted to know what, why why we're going through this. What's happening. What are we supposed to know? What, you know what, what's going on, but uh, right now we're nose to nose, toe to toe with this, and uh, I think we finally hit the, the the lowest level of the battlefield. This <laughs> gang, this gang stucking, this is grassroots. This affects all of us. As we awaken, as they gaslight us, as we get more effective at communicating with one another, uh, great model is Eric. Uh, they're gonna. They're going to try to control us. If they haven't done it through MK Ultra, if we weren't molested before we were six, if we're not paid off by being an entertainer or a politician, and we're starting to wake up organically, uh, you know, this is how they're going to get us. And we have to stand up to it. And I think uh, making uh, people know what gaslighting it is, is how pervasive it is. It's happening all around us. A lot of the people that you see on YouTube that are legitimate uh, alternative media are being gaslighted. Uh, a lot of the alternative media is not being gaslighted. I think that would tell you a lot. Uh, they're not harassed. Uh, they're showing a lot of things that I think are mis misleading. But anyway, that's another topic for another day. Eric, thank you very much for... Uh, for coming and talking to us. This is a critical subject. I'm going to do what I can to try to get this out and try to make it as popular as I can. This is the critical subject, I think, right now. I think you're exactly right. Do you want to sum up and then give your websites and stuff again? By the way, these websites are fantastic. They're so deep. They're so deep, you're going to be amazed. Go ahead, Eric. We want to sum up. Well, thank you, uh, Paul. It's always a pleasure to get a chance to compare notes and to talk about these things that that I we both recognize are absolutely critical issues. Um, yeah, I would just refer people to my website, 911nwo.com. Uh, I've got seven links now uh, relating to gang stalking on that site. I also am, and of course, uh, prove abundantly that 911 is an inside job. And of course, one of many, many, many false flag terror events that are meant to drive us into war and civil war. And uh, we are being manipulated like uh, Mary, you know, puppets on a, a string of, of the intelligence agencies, including the CIA. My uncle was a member, and so I have an extra interest. He was a few doors down from Alan Dulles, who mm -hmm. I have found out to be perhaps the greatest traitor in American history. Yeah. And, and I name it that way in the, in the article that I wrote about him. 
actually compiled from other books. I didn't really write much original. But anyway, 911nwo.com has the information about gang stalking. Naturalclimatechange.us is now being revised, uh, and it's, it's up as it is, but that gives a lot of information about the global warming fraud. Um, you know, you could look at the 911 and the global warming fraud as the, uh, as the two prongs of the, the pincers in the takedown of America. The, the 911, of course, is the, is the uh, pretext uh, for all these wars in the Middle East and for setting up this incredible police state at home and, of course, radically expanded defense budgets, et cetera. Uh, and then the, the, uh, the global warming is kind of the centerpiece of the UN Agenda 21. Uh, right. Let's completely redesign the, the uh, political landscape so that the United Nations is the prototype world government. So you could say one is the hard path. That's the, uh, that's the bomb the hell out of them approach right. is the 911. And then the soft, quote unquote, soft approach, the economic approach is the global warming and the phony environmental movement of the UN. But then coming through behind the scenes in both of them, we now see this, this uh, global uh, gang stalking program. We can, we can call it counterintelligence stalking. We can call it uh, cause stalking, community-based stalking, vigilante stalking, organized gang stalking. Gang stalking is a little bit of a misnomer because we're not talking about street gangs here. Right. We're talking about very, very coordinated groups, often coordinated from local police, often from uh, um, Homeland Security, uh, private contractors. Um, there is a network of individuals who are perpetrators, who can be called on. And I think uh, these people are kind of, a lot of them are bottom feeders, um, mm -hmm. you know, maybe very poor. And maybe there's a little money involved in it for them, you know, and maybe they get 15, 20, 40 calls a day from their superior who says, OK, there's going to be a blue van coming down the road and it's going to have these license plates. I want you to cut them off or whatever, you know. So they're responding to one call for this T.I. and then another call for that T.I. And this then becomes their livelihood. These perpetrators right. are brown noses. And then, of course, there are the people that are coordinating this. And the very, very, very top, according to Forwood on his, on his excellent little book here um, called Gang Stalking and Mind Control, uh, at the very top we have the Illuminati, Bloodline, Satanist families uh, who are uh, kind of behind the whole thing to give us a self-policing fascist totalitarian state. So we police ourselves. So right. we... People like Paul Marco and Eric Carlstrom don't don't venture out into these limbs, you know, because right. it's too dangerous. Because right. if I do that, then, you know, I could pay this price. So that would be where a lot of people are in America right now. It's like, I don't want to get involved because I don't want to be, yes. uh, you know, I don't want anything to, bad to happen to me. You know? right. So this, this insular protective shell goes up. And uh, I think that we're arguing that that's maybe counterproductive. We can see why people do it. <laughs> but people need to get a little more community minded and realize that what's happening in our communities is, is they're, they're being, uh, uh, people are being driven out of communities. I can right. tell you quite a few that have been driven out of, of Crestone. And uh, I can give you quotes from people here. You know, people are afraid to come out of their homes, one guy said. And yeah. he was a spy from back east. Um, well, guess what? Gang stalking would do that, wouldn't it? Sure it would. Drive you back into your home because that's the only place where you think you're safe. Right. And then, of course, if the directed energy weapons come, then you're not safe there either. That's right. So um, anyway, so this is a huge topic. I really appreciate you uh, helping me get the word out. And, and again, anytime we can go deeper into this rabbit hole, <laughs> I'll be glad to talk, you know, in a certain amount of time to get another, uh, you know, talk about some of this other information that I have on the website. But anyway, I really appreciate your, uh, your being willing and able to, uh, to jump in on this issue because I think it is, it is of global significance. There's nowhere to hide. That's right. It, yeah. there's, there's nowhere to hide. That's, that's, I like to end it like that because there is nowhere to hide. You can stay in your home. It's still happening. You've got to get out and do something. And I think you have to be offensive. So thank you very much, Eric. It's been wonderful. We'll, uh, we can do this anytime. 
Uh, I appreciate you. Thank I appreciate you. you so much. Thanks, Paul. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. <laughs> Bye.